Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today we're going to discuss file list malware. Also, I'm going to demonstrate how an attacker can potentially utilize built-in tools to Windows to completely compromise the system without ever dropping a malicious binary to disk at all. Thus, the file list nature of it. As always, Hack Naked TV is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security. If you're in the need of a pen penetration test, vulnerability assessment, or any other type of security assessment for that matter, contact Black Hills InfoSec at consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com. All right, fileless malware. So Trend Micro came out with an interesting post this week that detailed um, a new malware they're seeing in the wild. It's called the PhaseBot malware. What is interesting about this particular malware is that it doesn't actually drop any sort of file or binary to disk it at all. Why is that interesting? Well, because pretty much every antivirus company on the planet is doing what's called file-based det detection. So whenever you have your, your workstation, you've got your typical you know little AV on it, uh, whenever a new file hits the disk, AV's like, oh, I don't know you, let me check you against my list of known bad files. If you're on the bad list, psh, you're out. So whenever malware authors decide not to play by the rules anymore and they decide to not actually drop files to the disk, it makes it pretty hard for AV to detect, detect those types of things. So how does PhaseBot malware actually work? How does it actually carry out its malicious tasks if it's not actually dropping anything to disk at all? Well, it's utilizing built-in tools built-in Windows tools like PowerShell. And I find this kind of interesting because in the pen testing community, we've been using PowerShell to do malicious things for a pretty long time now. And to just starting to see it in the malware, uh, in, in just, just to start to see that the malware is starting to use it is, is kind of confusing to me. Um, I mean, it means either A, uh, malware authors either don't know about utilizing PowerShell within an environment, or B, uh, we just aren't detecting it, which I'm leaning more towards B because I'm pretty sure it's a lot more prevalent out there that more malware is using built-in tools like PowerShell um, than just this latest case. I mean, for example, um, you know, PowerShell in, in the pen testing community, uh, I mean, there's, there's multiple frameworks just built around pen testing and just built around, around attacking networks that are completely built in PowerShell. One of my favorites is PowerSploit. It was written by Matt Graber, which, by the way, thank you so much, Matt, for writing that because it's freaking awesome. I love this tool. I use it all the freaking time. So PowerSploit, um, specifically the, uh, the Invoke Shellcode module, I think kind of ties in really nicely to this whole fileless malware uh, article that was written by uh, Trend Micro. And the reason I say that is because the Invoke Shellcode module literally can be used to you, to write a, well, it doesn't write, it, it literally injects a payload of your choice. So something like, let's say you, you, you wanted to inject a Meterpreter payload into memory. You can utilize Invoke Shellcode, PowerShell script, to not write a file to disk, but literally inject it directly into memory, completely bypassing all of any sort of the AV detections that are out there. So to kind of like help drive this whole point home um, of how awesome you know, utilizing built-in tools is, I wanted to do a quick little demo for you. All right, so I, I set up a, uh, a Kali box on my, my uh, VMware Fusion system here with, um, I have a Windows Meterpreter Reverse HTTPS listener listening on port 443 for any, uh, for any connections back. So this is gonna be our attacker box. We've got invoke shellcode uh, in our web directory. And to, to help kind of set up this entire attack, my, my whole goal was to, to, to simulate a, uh, a typical phishing attack. So uh, we're going to pretend that somebody sent us a malicious phishing message that had an attachment that said something along the lines of, oh, check out this awesome new deal on shoes. We got 50% off. Download the attachment and open it up. So, you know, like nobody would ever open that. <laughs> so we, let's open up our Word document here. This is going to be our quote-unquote coupon, which, as you can see, I didn't actually like do any sort of intense work with putting an actual coupon here. But in the real world, you might actually have like a coupon code in there and make it look more realistic, to, you know, so people don't get like confused and stuff. Um, but the idea is that this is a macro-enabled Word document, which I should preface this entire attack with. Don't pay so much attention to the actual macro part of it because that's really just the payload delivery mechanism. But in reality. Um, any sort of payload delivery mechanism that can run PowerShell or any other Windows tool that's built in um, would work here. So <clears throat> just for my example, I wanted to use uh, a Microsoft Word document that's macro-enabled just because it's, it's, it's more realistic. 
So let's go ahead and say, yeah, I want to check out my new, uh, my new coupon. Let me enable content here. Okay, anything happen? No? Okay, cool. Let me just go about my business. I'm going to print out my coupon, you know, go take it to the store or whatever. But over here at our Cali box, if you take a look, we've got a interpreter session open now. How about that? Let's go ahead and interact with our new session. Do some sysinfo, and we'll get the UID. We can see that I've, I've actually compromised my victim host just literally by them clicking enable content for macros. So what exactly is happening there? Well, if we take a look at the actual macro, we can see that it's an auto open macro. And um, something I should also say is that this, this entire string would probably be obfuscated um, in a real world attack, but in our, in our case, I wanted to uh, just provide in clear text for clarity. Um, actually, I'm going to blow it up for you so you can kind of see it a little bit bigger. So we've got, literally, the macro is running PowerShell. It's going to go download our invoke shellcode uh, PowerShell script from, um, I have it running on a local, uh, my, my local Kali box, but, you know, in the, in the real world, you probably see this connecting out to some command and control server somewhere on the internet. Um, and then literally in, in, invoking the, the shellcode that was um, downloaded. So we downloaded the payload. Well, we downloaded the, the PowerShell script, I should say. Ran it. <clears throat> and then ran the, uh, the with the, the payload of being a Windows interpreter reverse HTTPS, which as I said earlier, this is this is one of the, the, the two that are literally built into the invoke shellcode script itself. But you could essentially provide any payload you wanted to here. I mean, you could you could write your own shellcode and provide it as a, as a payload. Um, it doesn't have to be reverse HTTPS. So we're gonna run Meterpreter reverse HTTPS, we're gonna send it back to our local host, which this is gonna be our attacker's IP on port 443. It's basically as simple as that. So just to kind of demonstrate the entire process of, of, of what I'm talking about when it comes to payload delivery, um, you know, so we, we, we decided to use Microsoft Word as our payload deliverer, but for from a sense of, um, from a sense of file less malware, this can be run from the command line. So let's say we run it from the command line. Literally, it's going right now. It's going to download invoke shellcode. It's going to um, run invoke shellcode and do the, do the entire process. And if we were to go look at our task manager, we'll see we've got we've got a PowerShell process running. But if you were to look through these, you're not going to find any sort of like interpreter payload or anything. Just you can you can look, but just take my word for it. Um, but if we were go to let's say as explore, just to just to obfuscate a little bit, well, hide a little bit more than what we've got here. We can go migrate directly into a different process, so you won't even see PowerShell anymore. So let's go back over here. We looked for our Explorer process. Let's migrate into process three three six six zero. And once that migrates, we'll take a look at Task Manager. Come on, migrate. There we go. Migrated, and PowerShell's gone. So, I mean. From a from a malware detection standpoint, that's that's pretty hard to detect, right? I mean, something ran PowerShell, injected it in memory. That process, the, well, the PowerShell process that was in, initialized initially, was um, the only thing we could really kind of look at, fit, like from this point of view. And now it's migrated into Explorer, all running in memory. Well, anyways, my my point there is that I think you're going to see a lot more of these file list type malwares in the future. And, and the reason is because why utilize or why why not utilize built-in tools to you know perform malicious functions and, and instead of just you know dropping a, a binary or some sort of malicious file to this that can end up getting detected in the future. Anyways, well, thank you so much for listening to my Hack Naked TV episode. Uh, if you want to check out some more, we've got hacknaked.tv. Check out Security Weekly at blip.tv/securityweekly. Check out some of the awesome awesome show notes at uh, securityweekly.com/wiki. Uh, coming up at the end of August, beginning of September, is the HTCIA conference, which I'll be speaking at. Um, if you if you want to uh, go attend that conference, uh, you use the this um, this promo code here, which will get you fifteen percent off. It's uh, Hack Naked. Uh, it's all caps, lower, um, and and no spaces. Um, if you want to contact me, my email is bo at blackhillsinfosec.com, and you can hit me up on Twitter at daftac. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great weekend.